All right, welcome, welcome, welcome. Sorry for the few minute delay there. Gotta love technology glitches as the last at the last minute. Excited to be with you this afternoon on, or this morning, sorry, on July the 1st. Holy crap, would you look at that? We are start of the third quarter. Uh, it is the start of the second half. It is the first day of the month, which is the ult an ultimate prospecting day for our team here because there's over 200 expires in our market. Uh, it's also Wednesday, which means it's also hump day, which means, I don't know, it's just a great day to be in real estate. All right, so I'm going to share with you today uh, 12 action items to implement in the third quarter. These are the exact same thoughts I shared with our team last week. So you're getting these fresh, uh, uh, right, uh, right in terms of, of actionable items, things that you can implement right now. This also happens to be the very last session of Relead. I know you're real sad about that. I'm sad about it too. Uh, believe it or not, this is our 18th session. Uh, when I did the session 17 last week, I mentioned that we were going to do a recap of all the sessions. And um, I decided to do this instead because I feel like a lot of what I'm going to share today is more important than a review or a recap of um, last week. All right. So I'm going to walk you through the 12 things that I shared with our team this past week. For those of you that are joining us for the first time ever, I'm sorry that you're joining us for the last session of Relead, but I'm excited you're with us. If you're not familiar with who I am, Jeff Glover from Detroit, Michigan, been in the business for 18 years. I'm still on the ground selling homes with you. I sell between 80 and 100 homes a year personally, and our team does nearly 1,000 transactions annually. So what am I gonna talk about today? We're gonna to go through this 12 business and marketing strategies for the third quarter. These are all things that I hope that you can implement right away. Now, I don't anticipate you're gonna take each one of these and take action uh, day one. My hope is actually that you pick one or two, identify one or two that you can apply right away this July. And then out of the other 10 or so, nine or so, depending on how many you choose, I want you to pick one or two that you can implement for the last half of the year, meaning you know maybe you take action on it in October, or maybe you take action on it in September. I don't want you to try to do them all at once, all right? So I'm gonna share with you 12 things that you can do that are action items right now, and I want you to pick one or two that you take action on this July, meaning one or two things that, yep, I'm doing these, and then I want you to pick another two or three or one that you enjoy, that you like, that you think that you can have results with, and I want you to insert that somewhere later in the year. All right, cool. So if you would, if you've been following along, you probably have a Relead workbook. So I want you to turn to a clean sheet of paper in your Relead workbook. If this is your first time joining us and you didn't get a workbook, then just open up a Word document or a new email or take out a yellow pad, my personal favorite, a yellow pad like crazy. Because I'm gonna run through these 12 fairly quickly. We're also gonna show some examples up on the screen. So uh, when I share something, we've got some examples to go along with those. Again, my name is Jeff Glover from Detroit, Michigan. You're joining me for the 12 action items to implement in the third quarter and the 18th and final session of Relead. Uh, now, if you're curious and you wanna see some of these other sessions, we did not put all of the Relead sessions on the internet. We've been recording maybe one out of every three. So if you just go in and search Relead, you can probably find some other sessions, right? We talked about recruiting plans. We talked about retention plans. We talked about coaching. We talked about training. We talked about how to put together a value proposition for your business. Uh, we talked about putting together a mission and, and a vision. We talked about business planning with your associates, how to attract more people to work with you. We covered all of those things in the last 18 sessions, much of which we did not put online, but we did put some of it online. You can search for that by just searching Relead on Google or look up our YouTube page. Normally we upload everything there. All right, so this is the last and final session. Uh, I know I'm tearing up, but that's okay. I'll see you guys next week because Monday, you know, Monday starts our new series, which is the SLS program, the little handwritten whiteboard uh, logo on the wall there. SLS starts Monday, uh, gosh, Monday at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So if you don't know what that is, if we have a few minutes at the end, I'll cover it. But if you want to check it out, that is our next program. We've got over 250 people registered for that already. Uh, you go to GloverU.com forward slash SLS to join us. GloverU.com forward slash SLS. If you want more details, it's cheap. It's like 99 bucks. Anyways, all right, let me jump in. All right, point number one, 12 things to do in the third quarter. Number one, let me take a swig of water because as you know, if you've been on these before, you know I like to go fast with no breaks in between. 
I don't believe in fluff. I don't believe in rah-rah. I don't believe in, in high-level motivation to get you pumped up. I believe in real, actionable items from someone who's on the ground with you. All right, point number one, ready? I want you to revise your social media plan in the third quarter to put a focus on buyers. I want you to revise your social media plan in the third quarter to put a focus on buyers. Now, you're probably thinking, Jeff, you are like always talking about us becoming listing masters. In fact, you have a program called Listing Mastery, right? You, you take Your team takes 80, 90, 100 listings a month. Why are you telling us to focus on buyers? Here's why. The best marketers know, the best companies, the best business owners, the best real estate agents, all right? The best marketers know that if you want to have success with your marketing, you need to create a solution to a problem, okay? This is why I never understood when the market's hot, why are real estate agents promoting the success they're having in selling listings? Listings are flying off the shelf. Nobody, nobody, nobody uh, is buying into this idea that you're the Superman agent because you're getting 103% of asking price. Every realtor is getting 103% of asking price. Every realtor is selling homes in, in less than 24 hours. Now, I'm, not, I'm being a little facetious when I say every, but the reality is, is that you have an opportunity to solve a problem right now, and you're better off promoting a solution to that problem than you are actually promoting the success you're having with sellers. And I want you to revise your social media uh, campaign in the third quarter to focus on your success with buyers. And there's three areas that I want you to focus on. There's three areas. I'm going to show you some examples in just a second. I want you to focus on first, anytime you can get a, well, let me back up for a second. Okay. Well, Jeff, how does promoting our success with buyers solve a problem? What is the problem there? The problem is this. The buzz right now is that no one can get their offers accepted. The buzz right now is that it's taking months and months to find a home. The buzz right now is that there's bidding wars like crazy and people are having to go over asking and they're competing with five, six, seven, ten multiple offers in order to get their offer accepted. That is a problem. And by the way, that problem is being perpetuated by consumers who are in the market to buy right now. Consumers who are shopping for homes right now, they're going to dinner or they're going to a barbecue or they're going on their boat or they're doing whatever with their friends and family, hopefully safely and six feet away. And they're talking about their experience. Gosh, we can't find a home for the life of us. Gosh, we couldn't get our offer accepted if we wanted to. Gosh, there's no inventory. We've been looking for months and months and we keep losing out to these multiple offer situations and our realtors are always trying to tell us to pay over asking. That is a problem. So you identify the problem and you be the solution. Well, how can you be the solution? There's three things that I want you to promote in the third quarter, and I promise you, you will be the solution. I promise you, it will lead to more referrals. I promise you, it will lead to more transactions. I want you to promote three things in the third quarter. Ready? Whenever you're able to secure a buyer a home in under 30 days, that is worth promoting. All right, the second, th so whenever you're able to secure, so just write down, all right, things to promote in quarter three, buyer success stories. Just write that down, buyer success stories. And the first one I want you to write down is time. In a minute, I'll give you some examples, but let me share these three first. The first one I want you to write down is time. The second one I want you to write down is money. The third one I want you to write down is uh, bidding wars. Time, money, bidding wars. Time, money, bidding wars. All right, so the first one is anytime you can help a buyer secure their home in 30 days or less, that's considered impressive. So write that down. Anytime, think of every buyer transaction you've had in the last six months, 12 months, or right now, or moving forward. When you, from the time you show them the first house to the time you get an offer accepted, have you secured them a home with an accepted offer in 30 days or less? If the answer is yes, I want you to shout that from the rooftops. The second one is um, uh, money. Anytime you've saved a buyer money. Now, you might be saying, Jeff, how do you save buyers money right now when we have to bid over asking price? Well, if you negotiate money off of an inspection, are you saving them money? Uh huh. Uh, if the appraisal comes in low and you convince the seller to reduce, are you saving them money? Okay, right? So you, there's things that happen in a real estate transaction where you can save your buyer money. Are you able to negotiate concessions, whatever? You promote that, even if they paid asking price, or maybe you got them something that was 
$5,000 below the asking price. And if that was the case, well then kudos to you, you saved them five grand. But if you save them another two off of the inspection and maybe another two because of the appraisal, well now we're at what, $9,000 saved. That is worth talking about. That is something that as people are scrolling through their Facebook news feeds, they say, well, I keep saying this, Jeff Glover, he's saving these buyers money. Save 4,000, save 9,000, save 15,000. So I'm sharing all my success stories from the start of the year. That's number two, money saved. And number three, my personal favorite is multiple offers accepted. Multiple offers uh, accepted, meaning every single time you're in a bidding war, all right, I want you to think about how many offer you, you I'm sorry, you need to ask the listing agent after you get the offer accepted. If you don't mind sharing with me, you know, and you don't have to if you don't want to, about how many offers were we competing with? Oh, there was probably like six or seven other offers. Whoa, six or seven other offers. Thank you. Well, congratulations. Hey, we're so excited to get to a closing table. Looking forward to working with you. Now I turn around and I create an image that says, beat out seven other offers, beat out six other offers. And I promote the heck out of that. Why is that? Because I'm promoting a solution to a problem. You see, consumers think that every listing is selling fast. Consumers think that every listing is selling for more than asking. Consumers see a lot of success with sellers. But when is the last time they saw a realtor sharing their success with a buyer? Better yet, when is the last time they were at dinner or a picnic or something with a relative or a family member who was complaining about their experience in shopping for a house? You're not going to believe it. I just saw yesterday. Uh, I keep seeing these, these posts or these, you know, whatever from Jeff. He's saving buyers money. They're winning multiple offer situations. You ought to give them a call. So here's what you do. You create an image, right? For, for those of you that are, that are uh, uh, you know, familiar with Canva, you use Canva. Uh, if you're, if you're uh, uh, at a brokerage where they offer a system, you use their system. You know, if you're with Keller Williams, I know they have command, you know, designs and command, right? I don't care what system you use. You can use a simple, we use Canva, all right? Now, let me show you. I think we've got a couple examples on the screen of these three instances. So if we could pull those up, all right? So this is the one where, this is just an example of one. Buyer found her dream home in less than 30 days. Oh, by the way, this is a twofer. Completed with, mul competed with multiple offers and beat out a cash offer. You're not seeing a lot of buyer success stories. And by the way, consumers aren't either, which is why these are gonna stand out. Let's look at the next one. And by the way, these aren't, you're probably thinking, oh, I, can create, I can create this easily. You're probably, oh, I've done these before. This is nothing. In fact, my marketing's even a little better. Fine, these are real life examples. These are actual examples of agents of ours that have had success. Here's another one. Just sold, save my buyers $12,900. Now, it could have been off the asking price, could have been off of uh, the appraisal came in low. I don't care what it is. We saved them 12 dollars promote the heck out of it. The third example, beat out seven other offers, all right? Anytime you have a success story in beating out other offers, it needs to be promoted, it needs to be shared. So that is point number one. I want you to revise your social media plan to focus on buyer success stories, all right? Point number two, ready? I want you to create a neighborhood Facebook group. And if one already exists, I want you to create another. Now, let me step back for a second. I know there's been a lot of buzz over the last year about Facebook groups. In fact, we had several people on our stage in Orlando, several people in the summer uh, on the stage in, in Traverse City for our retreat last summer, talking about their success on Facebook with Facebook groups. I'm being a little more specific with this. I want you to create a neighborhood Facebook group. Now, preferably the neighborhood you live in, right? Uh, if, 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 if you're in a situation where you don't live in a neighborhood, find the closest neighborhood or find a neighborhood that you want to farm. All right, create a neighborhood Facebook group. And if one already exists, I want you to create another. All right, I want you to create a second one. Now, here's what you do. So you're probably wondering, okay, Jeff, what is the benefit of creating a neighborhood Facebook group? One word, ready? Notifications. All right. There is nothing you can do on Facebook other than going live. All right. There's nothing you can do on Facebook other than going live. We'll talk about that in a minute. That notifies 100% of the people that you're friends with. Nothing. Going live does. And, and if you have people in a Facebook group, everyone gets a notification. And so what happens is when you have a neighborhood Facebook group of 50, 75, 100, 150, 200, when you create a post, all of those people get notified. And what does that do? Number one, even if they don't click on the notification, it's branding. They're seeing your name, you know, hyphen realtor, comma realtor, whatever, whatever your name, your title is, whatever your Facebook name is. They're, they're seeing that and they're remembering, oh, they're in real estate. That's right. So it's just, it's just cementing, it's taking up space in their head. 
But more importantly, you can start engagement in that Facebook group and you can add value, something we spent a lot of time talking about at our summit in Orlando. How do you add value to your database? This is a perfect way to add value. You can talk about community events, you can organize activities, you can have the first you know, family fun day, you can have a, uh, you know, organize a food truck. There's a lot of things you can do in a neighborhood Facebook group. Notice I didn't say you can ask for business. Notice I didn't say you can share your listings and sales. No, all right? The neighborhood Facebook group is not a place for you to promote yourself. It will naturally happen when you provide value. Now, by the way, if let's say you do four or five posts a month and you get some engagement going, I don't mind if once a month you share all of the listings and sales in the neighborhood, but don't say things like, hey, don't forget, I'm a realtor, right? Just kind of nonchalant. Hey guys, if anyone's curious as to what's been sold in our neighborhood in the month of June, here you go. And then just let it lie. And then a week from now, you create another post. Hey, it's 4th of July's behind us. I was thinking we could organize something for the neighborhood. Who wants to create an activities committee? Whatever. There's a lot of different things you can do there. But when you add value to a particular neighborhood, people are going to see your name constantly because you're posting and interacting. Okay, so there's branding. And there's more likely that they're going to reach out to you to list their house or reach out to you to help them find their next home because of the value that you've added and their knowledge of you in the business. That is the reason why you create a neighborhood Facebook group. Now, if one already exists, I want you to create a second one, perhaps a niche one, right? So, you know, one of our agents, she came to me and we're, I'll use her example a little bit later too. Her name's Amy. Uh, she said, Jeff, my neighborhood already has a Facebook group. Uh, so now what? Well, Amy, why don't you create, uh, she lives in Northville Ridge. Why don't you create Northville Ridge Moms Group? Northville Ridge Moms. Okay, now there's all this interaction, maybe less people in there, but maybe you're getting more intimate with that group. All right, one of our agents also, same thing. Hey, Jeff, our group already has, a, our, our, our neighborhood already has a pretty active one. What would you do? Well, I would create a niche group. Hey, don't you live across the street from a golf course? Yeah. What if you created, uh, he lives in Mill River. What if you created Mill River Golfers? And the next thing you know, people are organizing, hey, you guys want to go play golf this weekend? Or we need a fourth. Anyone need a fourth? We need a fourth. Who needs a fourth? And now you're on a golf course with four or eight people that you would have never even maybe gotten a chance to meet or have any sort of relationship with. Sure, your group might be a little smaller than the big neighborhood community group, but it's tighter knit and tighter knit could lead to more referrals. So you might be wondering, all right, Jeff, I get it. I understand the value of a Facebook group. I've heard about this a million times. How do I get people into my group? Very simple. You create a postcard mailing. And it's a very, it's a very uh, professional but simple looking postcard. I'll show you an example in a second that shows almost like it came from the community. So your name's not on it. There's no branding, no phone number. And it's encouraging people to join the Facebook group. If you guys could pull that up on the screen so I can give you an example of that postcard. There you go. So there's the front of the postcard. Okay, this is just an example. One of our associates, Taylor Kerrigan, some of you are probably familiar with her. She did this in her neighborhood. Join the Highland Lakes Facebook group. That's the front, very neutral. Notice, no company name, no logo. Her name's not on it, no phone number on it. And then let's look at the back side of that. Join for news in the neighborhood, recommendations, community meetups, questions, answers, and more. How do you get to it? Search Highland Lakes Community Group. All right, I just asked her this morning before the live. I said, okay, tell, refresh my memory. How many again in your neighborhood? About 650 people in my neighborhood. Uh, how many people have joined the Facebook group? Over 200 from this postcard. Now, it's more than the postcard. Okay, sorry, my nose itches a little bit. It's more than this postcard because what happens is when people get in the group, you start engaging, interacting, and then they say, oh, hey, next time you're taking the garbage out, if you see George you know, get George in the group. We're missing George. We got to get George in here. I know he takes care of all the plants in the neighborhood. What can we do to get George in the group, right? Oh, I'll make sure George knows of the group. All right. So it's not just a postcard mailing. It's the interaction that takes place in the Facebook group. And of course, the interaction that takes physically outside of the Facebook group. So if you're wondering how to create it, send out a neutral looking postcard and voila. Next thing you know, you've got a Facebook group, 50, 75, 100, 150 people. You have to interact. You have to engage. And most importantly, um, you cannot ask for business. It cannot be a sales pitch. You cannot solicit in there. All right. Number three. Number three, I want you to identify identify one or two new scripts to master in the third quarter. Identify one or two new scripts to master in the third quarter. 
Now, for some of you, it might be, well, I really wanted to go after expireds. Great, go after expireds. Or it might be, well, I really wanted to go after for sale by owners. Cool, let's master the for sale by owner script. A lot of you I know on our SLS program, you're gonna learn all of our scripts and you're gonna master more than two scripts. But regardless, I want you to just pick one or two and own it. What I recommend, and I'll give you for instance, one that we've been working on with our agents in the last uh, month or so since COVID is, hey, we, we were already talking to people about, you know, touring their home via FaceTime and touring their home via Zoom. What if instead of doing the seller prequel, because we teach a seller prequel script, there's a buyer prequel, not the lender prequel. There's a buyer prequel and a seller prequel. Again, we'll cover all this in SLS. I know a lot of you on here probably already signed up for it. What if we did the prequel via Zoom or via FaceTime instead of the, um, you know, just over the phone? And so we have a script that we've used and it sounds like this, you know, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, in order for me to be most prepared for the appointment and more importantly, get your home priced appropriately the first time, it would be very helpful if we could do just a quick seven to 10 minute Zoom. You could walk me through your home and give me an idea of what we're working with. Give me an idea of some of your updates. Just point out some things prior to coming out. I don't want to be like one of those agents that just comes out and gives you a price right there on the spot. I want to be able to uh, uh, take in what I see and give it some thought and come out and get the price right the first time around. Would that be a value to you? Oh, yeah, sure, Jeff. That's no problem. We can do that right now. Perfect. Do you prefer FaceTime or do you prefer Zoom? Okay, alternate choice close. Uh, FaceTime's fine. All right, cool. Uh, I'll FaceTime you and I'll see you in just a couple minutes. It's only going to take seven to ten minutes. And the next thing you know, we're walking around together. They get to see me for the first time. Maybe they haven't met me. We're walking around the house together and I'm asking them questions about their house. What do you think I'm doing during that process? Building rapport. What do you think building rapport does at that point in the potential transaction? It reduces their chances of signing someone else before meeting with me. You've all been there. Ah, Jeff, I know you were coming out this Saturday, but we signed with someone else. Darn it, I didn't even get a chance to present. Well, if I've got a little bit level, a uh, little bit of a higher level of rapport than most agents, who do you think they're most likely going to keep their appointment with? For sure, they're keeping it with me. They've already met me face to face over Zoom or FaceTime. What does it also do? It also actually gives me an idea of what I'm working with, so I can be, uh, I'm more likely to get their price right. Okay, that's just one example. We're going to cover tons of those in the SLS program. But regardless whether you take that program or not, I want you to identify one script. And if you're in the program, you're going to get a copy of all of our scripts. Okay, number four. I want you to recreate your value proposition to your database this summer. I want you to recreate your value proposition to your database this summer. What do I mean by that? Okay, what I mean by that is at the beginning of the year, you said, I'm going to do A, B, and C to add value to my database, Jeff. Thank you for having us out to Orlando in January and giving us all these ideas and these panelists and these interviews. Everyone shared all the things they're going to do to add value to their database this summer or this year. Why is that? Well, because if you add value, you're going to get business return, period. That's just how it works. You can't just make four phone calls a year and ask for business and get business. You have to add value, right? That's the, that's the old way of doing it. That's the old trainer and, and coach mentality. You got to add value in order to get repeat referral business now. So, we put together these grandiose plans. We're gonna do this in January, we're gonna do this in February, we're gonna do this in March, we're gonna do this in April. We put all these things together, and then guess what? COVID hit, right? We had to cancel, we do an opening day party for 600 people, we had to cancel that. We had a, we had a zoo event planned for this summer, we had to cancel that, right? Maybe we're gonna move it to late summer, early fall, depending, hopefully we don't see a, another second wave here in Michigan. I know other parts of the country are starting to see that. So chances are the moral of the point number four is you put together a plan of three, five, seven, ten 10 things you were going to do to add value to this group. And chances are your plans have changed. I guarantee you there's something on that list that you say, oh crap, I never got around to doing that because of COVID. So all I'm asking you to do is think about what you could do in the next 60 days to add value to that group. A lot of our agents are doing like outdoor events. Well, we can't do anything inside with more than 50 people, so let's do something outside. Or some people are still doing virtual happy hours, right? I don't care what it is. All right, we could talk all day about the things that you can do, and we did talk about that back during COVID. I remember I covered that. But I want you to identify one or two things you can do to add value to your database this summer. Point number five, it's time to step up your online reviews, okay? Now, I'm sure all of you have some level of, uh, of program or process for that, all right? I want you to add another one or two steps to that. I know you're probably, Jeff, you've talked about reviews before, we get it. 
all right, have you changed anything? Have your reviews went up? What do your reviews look like now? Have you Googled your name and put the word reviews after it? How many reviews do you have compared to your competitors? I promise you, as time goes on, reviews. We talked about this at the summit, and that was prior to COVID. Okay, I don't know how I had the foresight for that, but I talked about as time goes on, the importance of reviews is going to increase. Why is that? Well, now because of COVID, people are apprehensive about who they're going to meet with. People are apprehensive about who they're going to have out to their house. So guess what? You have to put some time and energy into getting your reviews up. Now I know, Jeff, I'm so busy with sales. I'm so busy with sales. All right, here's a very simple formula to follow. Ready? Ask for them at the closing, ask for them within seven days, and ask for them after 30 days. All right, in the SLS program, we're actually going to share our entire five-star program because it's important because you need to have a program in order to get your reviews up. We have over a thousand reviews on Zillow. You better believe we get a lot of come list me's. You better believe we have a lot of consumers say, I want to work with you to help me find my next house. So what effort are you putting into your reviews? Do you have a program? All right. Do you, do you send your clients to dinner when they write you a nice review? I don't care what it is. You got to add something to get that number up. All right. And if you could do just a real simple formula, ask at the closing afterwards, of course, within seven days of closing and after 30 days. Okay. We use a file closeout email. We shared it at one of our events. It gets us tons of results. Okay. Again, we'll be covering that in the SLS program. Whether you join that, whether you join us for the, the GloverU.com SLS program, I want you to at least put some effort into your five-star reviews this summer or your reviews this summer. Point number six, now is a great time to update your listing and buyer presentation material. Now is a great time to update your listing and buyer presentation material. And think COVID, think post-COVID, think so I don't, what I don't want to have happen is I don't want you to go on an appointment and present some material and say, all right, well, this is, this is what we used to use, but because of COVID, A, B, and C has changed. No, no, no. I want what you take out to reflect what's going on right now. Don't be one of those agents that says, ah, yeah, we, as you know, we had these printed in January, but obviously because of COVID, but here's what's different. No, throw those in the trash. I know it costs money, but you're up against the best of the best. And they're taking marketing material and presentation material out there and presenting things that are, that are current. All right. I want you to be current. And I want you to be relevant. So we just made some tweaks to ours and I'll just show you a couple examples. We probably made four or five tweaks, which everyone that's in the SLS program is going to get a copy of our buyer and seller plans of action, but I'm going to give you a, a little taste of it. I'm going to show you two changes we made right now. So if we could pull that up on the screen, please, this is the, um, the, um, there you go. So that is an example of a page in our, um, uh, a page in our buyer, our buyer plan of action, right? So recommendations for viewing homes post COVID. Now you guys all know this stuff. You probably have a document from your brokerage or you probably already created something like that, but did it make it into your actual buyer consultation material? Did something like that actually make it into your seller presentation material? I think we have another example of something else we put in there. So we did a lot of work for nurses and first responders over the last six months. So guess what? We're showing that off. All right. If you did something during COVID or you made adjustments to your business due to COVID, you got to update your marketing material to reflect that. Otherwise, you won't appear current and you won't appear relevant. All right. So take this opportunity to update your buyer and seller presentation material in our SLS program, which again, is GloverU.com forward slash SLS. All attendees are going to get a copy of both our buyer and seller presentation material. Okay, number seven. Oh, I love this one. You guys will know why if you've been following me for a while. Number seven, I want you to take this opportunity to rewrite your morning routine. Rewrite your morning schedule. Everyone's schedule has changed. Schools, you know, when school is in session, all right, for a lot of you, you were the, you were the chef, uh, you were the chauffeur, you were the teacher. Well, you probably weren't doing a lot of chauffeuring because everything was closed. You were the teacher, you were the realtor, you were the mom, you were the dad, you were the head of the household, whatever. And now school's out. Now things have changed. Now things have relaxed. So guess what? Some offices have opened. Businesses have opened. So your schedule and your morning routine has probably changed. When is the last time you rewrote your morning routine? I'll give you a little hint. All right. Number one, your morning routine is only supposed to be income producing focus. All right. Generating new business focus. All of your servicing, all of your appointments, all of that can wait till the afternoon. I'm finding new business in the morning. I'm servicing business I have in the afternoon and I'm going on appointments in the late afternoon, period. What do you do from the time you wake up until lunchtime? 
I want to know what you do at 6 a.m., 7 a.m., 8 a.m., 9 a.m., 10 a.m. Let me let you in a little secret. If you had a peek at my schedule, it does not change. I do the same thing at 6 a.m., at 7 a.m., at 8 a.m., at 9 a.m. every single day. Why is that? Well, because I know and it's proven that consistent activities in my schedule will yield a consistent income. So I know for a fact one of the things that we're working on this SLS program is actually helping agents write their most productive schedule, actually helping agents master time management. Because I know especially for you high eyes out there, you high expressives, you don't want to be tied down to a schedule. I hate a schedule. I hate a schedule. Okay. It doesn't have to be strict like minute by minute, but there's certain things you can do to improve your time management that is going to improve your income period. And by the way, still have balance in your life, right? This isn't this whole idea that if I'm more disciplined with my time than Jeff, all he wants me to do is work harder, work harder, work harder. No, I'd actually rather you work a very efficient four or five hour day, which by the way, if, if by now you haven't seen it, our Glover Gazettes are out. Hopefully you got your copy. Okay. These are free. Glover, GloverU.com forward slash Gazette, 50 pages. This is our largest one. There's a four hour schedule in here. Anyways, the reason why I bring that up is because I'd rather you have a solid four hour schedule that's, that's efficient and, and, and intense than working an eight hour loose day, all right? So this is an opportunity to rewrite your morning routine. Number eight, utilize video, especially Facebook Live now more than ever. Utilize video, especially Facebook Live now more than ever. Okay, remember what I said earlier about Facebook Live. It is the only thing you can do aside from having a Facebook group is the only thing you can do on Facebook where you post when, when you go live, everyone gets notified. There's that, there's the notification word again, right? There is the reason why we do it. Okay. Why do we do, why do we go Facebook live? Cause everyone gets notified. And if everyone gets notified, then that is an opportunity for you to brand. Okay. And make an impression. Impressions lead to interactions and interactions lead to business. All right. So why do I want you to go live? Because everyone gets notified every, and now I get it. You're going to say, Jeff, I went live once and three people were watching and I don't really like the way I look and I stuttered and I say, I'm a lot and I hate the way I'm on camera. It's okay. People want to know that you're real. People want to know that you're human. I screw up all the time. I mean, I probably screwed up seven times since this thing started. It's okay. People want to know that you're human. So when you go live on Facebook, you're going to go live every time you take a new listing, every time you get a buyer offer accepted, every time you win a multiple offer situation, every time you save a buyer money, every time you get it done in under 30 days, every time you have a successful closing, every time market stats come out, you go live. Once or twice a week, you go live, people get notified, they're going to watch it later, I promise you. You might have had three or four people watching, ah, this is embarrassing, I don't know, I mean, one of our, one of our cameras is live in the Glover Hue Inner Circle right now. There might be six or seven people watching, but guess what? Within 24 hours, it's going to have 50, 60, 70, 80, 90 views. So people are getting your message, even if you don't think they are. Okay, take advantage of that function on Facebook while it's still available. Number nine, take the opportunity to find one thing that you need to be held accountable for and ask for accountability. Take this opportunity to find one thing that you need to be held accountable for and ask for accountability. You guys have heard the story about me a million times. I wrote checks to get into the office 730. I wrote checks to someone in the office to get me there on time. There's something that you are lacking right now in your business, whether it, or it can be your personal life. It can be your health. It can be your wealth. It can be your finances. It can be your relationships. It can be uh, listings. It can be sales. It can be time in the office. Whatever it is, something is lacking. Meaning you look back in the last six months, you say, gosh, I'm not doing a good job of this identify what this is and find someone to hold you accountable to getting better at this, whatever that is. Just one thing, add one accountability piece to your routine, to your business plan for the last half of the year. All right, number 10, I want you to do a better job of telling a story on Facebook. All right, you have to think about your Facebook posts as writing copy. All right, if you're familiar with the advertising industry, copy is you know, if you hear a radio ad, somebody's reading the radio ad, they're reading copy. Uh, a TV commercial, somebody's reading copy. Your copy is what is said in your posts. So you have to think of yourself as a copywriter, if you will, right? As a marketer in that way. And so I want you to do a better job of telling a story. What do I mean by telling a story? I don't want to see any of these, any more of these. Hey, new listing, three bedrooms, two baths, a thousand square feet. Call me for a personal showing. No, knock that off. That doesn't get any engagement anymore. Facebook 
hides that stuff. Facebook doesn't want you to see that stuff. Instead, instead, I want you to do a better job of promoting, okay, what happened in the experience? What happened in the transaction? Where were they moving from? Why were they moving there? And I think we've got a couple examples, if you could pull these up, of, of our agents telling a story in their Facebook posts and getting great engagement. All right, here's one from Amy Duncan. I've mentioned her name before. In fact, Amy, we interviewed. Hopefully you got a chance to catch the, the interview I did with Amy when we talked about, um, uh, what was it, the cost of unemployment. So Amy Duncan, congratulations to my client Keyshawn and his family on their first home purchase. They found the perfect home in Novi. Keyshawn, his sister and his parents have been considering a home purchase for some time. They travel frequently, so we had to fit home searching in with their busy travel and work schedules. We found what they were looking for in the Knights Bridge Gates community. The location and amenities were perfect for the family. And oh, by the way, look at just sold. Buyer saved nineteen thousand dollars on their purchase. That is an example of telling a story. That's going to get more engagement. It's going to get more likes. It's getting more comments. Could get a couple shares. That's going to lead to referrals. Here's another example by uh, our associate, Mr. Richard Niehazel. So uh, this was a family member that he was helping out, right? So he's going into. Have you ever heard the old adage I do? So he's writing copy. Whenever, and by the way, this particular post, I don't know, I, I don't think he's ever had more than 50 or 70 likes on any of his posts relating to real estate. I think he had over 100 likes on this, 15, 16, 17 comments. Whenever you can tell a story, it's going to lead to more engagement. Engagement leads to more branding. Branding leads to more impressions. Impressions lead to more referrals. All right. Thank you for that. So get a, do a better job of telling a story with your Facebook posts. Okay. Number 11. Number 11. I want you to utilize a buying power checklist with your buyers moving forward in the third quarter, all right? We talked about the buzz, buyers can't get their offers accepted. I want you to create a buying power checklist, all right? So I'm gonna show you an example in a second, but here's, here's why a buying power checklist is important. You have a buyer consultation up front with a buyer. Before you go out and show them homes, you share with them what's taking place in the market and all the things they can do to get their offer accepted. If you don't do this up front, guess what happens? Oh, well, our parents said we should offer this, or oh, I don't think we need to offer asking quite yet. We just started looking. Trust me, I've been there. I'm still on the ground with you, okay? Well, if you let them know what's taking place ahead of time and you prepare them for all the things they can do, they won't be in shock when you're trying to tell them, I need a $20,000 earnest money deposit. I need you to offer 15,000 over appraisal. You go through a document. Now, I'm gonna show you ours in just a second, okay? So if you guys actually could pull it up. Okay, so it's just a simple buying power checklist. And on this buying power checklist, of course, everyone that takes the SLS program, we're gonna help you create your own. Uh, if you're not gonna be in that program, you can figure out a way to do this, but that is an example of things you can do to get a buyer's offers accepted. And you see all those little boxes there? We're making check marks, all right? So we're actually making check marks with the buyers, as we go through, when we say, Mr. and Mrs. Buyer, the more checks you have, the greater chance we have of getting your offer accepted. Now, one of the other things that we're going to cover in the SLS program is our buying power guarantee. And it is a sure way to help you get more offers accepted. Now, uh, how do you do this on your own? You can take that off the screen now. How do you do this on your own? You have a sales meeting in your office, all right? Go to your, your brokerage, Coldwell Banker, Remax, Century 21, Keller Williams, Independent, whoever you are, wherever you're from. You tell your manager, hey, during the next meeting, I want to do what's called an I've seen it all activity. We just did this with our group a couple of weeks ago. We had a great time. I've seen it all. Everyone shares one thing. Everyone has to bring one thing to the meeting, the craziest thing they've seen in offers to get them accepted. And guess what? Everyone writes them all down. And there you go. You've created your buying power checklist. All right. You could even do this with a Facebook thread. And if you have a, uh, your real estate office, Facebook group, just start a Facebook thread and get everyone chiming in. What's the craziest thing you've seen in an offer on one of your listings? What's the craziest thing your buyer has done to get their offer accepted? You list them all out, you write them out, you present them to buyers during the buyer consultation. I promise you, you'll get more offers accepted that way. By the way, during the, during our, our sales program, the SLS program, we're walking, uh, all of the agents through step-by-step the, the, the lead conversion, the buyer consultation, the buying power presentation, how to get offers accepted. So we're covering all that in case you were wondering. Finally, number 12, the post COVID business plan or what we're calling the second half of the year business plan. All right. The second half of the year business plan, which by the way, it's in the gazette. Um, I don't know. It's in here somewhere. It's towards the back. Yeah, so we put this in the Gazette. So hopefully you got your copy by now. If not, don't worry, it's on its way as long as you're on our mailing list. 
You have to have a plan for the second half of the year. I shared our exact plan in the Gazette. So when you get a copy of it, you will see that. There's one thing I want you to make sure you add to that plan. All right, and I want you to write this down. Ready? This is in your second half of the year plan. All right, so you're going to create a post-COVID business plan. If you want, or if, if you don't subscribe to the Gazette and you want it really quickly right now, you just go to gloveru.com uh, forward slash plan. So G-L-O-V-E-R, the letter U.com forward slash plan. It's free. It's on there. There you go. There's, there's some examples of that. And um, you can download that once, once you, you get registered. And uh, um, uh, there's a video that goes along with it as well. So if you, you, if you Google search Glover U uh, business plan, there's a 45-minute instructional video that goes along with it. But I want you to add one thing to the plan. Ready? Write this down. Okay, so you're adding this to your post-COVID business plan or second half of the year plan, depending on what part of the country you are. Because I know people are saying, post-COVID, what do you mean? Cases are increasing here. That's not a post-COVID plan. Listen, if you're on, on today and you're in one of the states that is seeing an increase right now, I feel for you. I'm sorry for you. Uh, I hope that, that your family and your friends all stay healthy. Uh, you know, up in Michigan, we got hit hard. So we've been through it. We went through the shutdown. Uh, we saw uh, the hospitals. Uh, you know, some of you may know. May know we delivered five thousand sandwiches to all the area hospitals. I visited probably seventeen or eighteen uh, Metro Detroit hospitals and saw uh, 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 waiting waiting rooms just full of people. So uh, hopefully it doesn't get that bad where you're at. Regardless, we're here for you if it does because I've been through it. Because we had a lot of people say. How are you able to sell real estate when everything's shut down? Well, if you have any questions, <laughs> Michigan was like second or third hardest hit. We, I can help that. I want you to add number 12, point number 12 to your, put together your second half of the year plan. I want you to add, ready? Sign up for SLS. Write it down. Don't laugh. Sign up for SLS. All right. This is the only time we're going to offer a program like that that cheap. It's $99, okay, times three. So it's three months, all right? It's 24 seconds in 12 weeks, and we have one goal, to turn everyone that goes through this program into a master sales professional, period. I know there's a lot of great training on technology and a lot of great training on marketing, and don't get me wrong, we cover technology and marketing and things that we're doing as well, but not enough people are teaching you how to actually convert leads, teaching you how to show less homes to get more buyer offers accepted, teaching you how to go on less appointments and get more listing contracts signed, teaching you how to take more listings. There's a reason why most of our competitors in Michigan model our business, because they see the amount of listings that we take. Well, I'm going to share everything we do to get to that level. So it's 24 sessions in 12 weeks. It happens twice a week. It's on Mondays and Wednesdays. It starts next Monday, by the way. So this is the last time you're going to hear me talk about it. And some of you are saying, oh, thank God, Jeff, this is all I hear about. It starts next Monday uh, at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. All right. 24 sessions. It's taught by me. I'm not interviewing people. There's not rah, rah. You know, there's not fluff. It is step one, step two, step three. It's the 24 steps in the Glover U sales system. Ready? Skills leads systems that is what we're talking about in those 24 sessions over 12 weeks i'm going to walk you through how to go from an agent to a licensed salesperson with a systematic business so we get a lot of questions hey is this for new agents this is for experienced agents this is for everybody because we have a lot of experienced agents that are taking this you know maybe they're running a team or they're wanting to start a team one day and they want to develop a training program this is our training program i'm sharing it with you right or we have a lot of newbies or agents that maybe since COVID haven't sold as many homes as they want to, and they need a jump start to the second half of the year. We're going to go through the dialogue scripts and language techniques that we use in our business. We're going to dissect both the buyer consultation and the listing presentation from start to finish. I'm going to arm yourself. I'm going to arm you guys with core sales skills. That's my favorite part. All right. Skills lead system. We start with the sales skills. You have to become a master salesperson in order to convert the leads that the technology creates. That's what a lot of people are missing the boat on. They have all this great technology, all these great systems, but they're not salespeople, right? You have people signing up and getting in this business that have no sales experience, and they're saying, go sign up for this. Uh, go, go put this marketing out there. Go create this Facebook ad. Uh, but how do I generate the lead? How do I convert the lead? How do I, how do I get the buyer to work with me versus the competition? We're going to cover all that. 
Neuro-linguistic programming, one of my favorite parts, you may have heard of NLP. We rewrote an entire NLP several years ago. And if you're wondering, for those of you that know anything about our team, the number one thing people say about our team in Michigan is Jeff teaches his people how to be salespeople. Well, let me let you in on a little secret. It's through NLP. We teach NLP. You're going to learn that in this program as well. The, all of our buyer and seller presentations, all of our marketing material, everything that we put out for sellers, everything that we present to buyers, you're going to have access to all that. We're going to show you how to recreate that on your own. We're going to walk through pricing, price reductions, all of our marketing strategies we use. We're going to talk about mass marketing. We're going to talk about social media marketing, everything related to marketing. Now, here's the deal. I'm not going to share with you what I read in a book or what I read in a Facebook group or, or, or what I hear of other people doing, maybe having success with. There's enough coaches and trainers out there doing that. I'm only going to share with you what we're doing right now, what's working right now, period. No theories, no BS, no fluff. What's what we're doing right now that's working, all right? We're still taking 50, 60, 70 listings per month. I'm gonna share with you how we're doing it. We're getting buyer offers accepted. We just had a record month, our record June, the month after COVID, a record June. We're gonna share how we just had a record June. Again, every single lead generation source I'm gonna cover, where our business comes from. Yeah, Jeff, I think that's great that you have 70 listings taken, but where do you get them? I'm gonna cover that. I'm gonna go through all of our sources of business and what we do to get business from those sources. All right, I'll shut up now. If you wanna check it out and register, it starts Monday, gloveru.com forward slash S. LS. Guys, it's 99 bucks. All right. Most coaching programs of ours, even 375, 499, a thousand a month. We've got one that's 1500 a month. We've got over 150 people in our programs today. That's not even counting the SLS program. All right. It starts Monday. It's gloveru.com forward slash SLS. If you can make it great, I'd love to see you there. If not, I hope you got a ton of value out of these 12 things that you can implement in quarter three. Thanks for joining us. Everyone have a great 4th of July holiday. Get some time off and we'll see most of you on Monday. Make it a great one.